Good day, viewers. Today, right in Rua Austin, or RRO, we've got a new locomotive and a bunch of new scenarios. We've got the DB G6. This is made by Train Sim Germany, or TSG, and the uh, author is Mike Galter, or Mate Galter. Maybe it's Mate Galter. But anyway, it's uh, pretty damn good, so let's take a look. All right, then, first up, we've got the... Uh, little g6 locomotive diminutive but very powerful it's a diesel hydraulic it's a relatively cool livery of green and gray it's nothing like all the other locos in this game that's for sure and it's got uh, quite a cool appearance i quite like it it's i guess if you took the uh the gronk and made it really powerful and really fast and took its side roads off and made it german efficient this is what you'd get so it's a bit like the 363, but it's also totally unlike the 363. Being a diesel hydraulic, its control mechanisms are completely different to anything else in the game, and you'll need to learn them, so give it a chance. Diesel hydraulics basically take a while to get moving. When you start powering, the first thing they do is make lots of noise, the second thing they do is make lots of bubbles in their transmission, and the third thing they do is slam you back into the seat when they start moving. Uh, that's when they're light engine, of course. When they're pulling a load, they tend to just knuckle down and pull. This one has two drive modes. It's got a shunting drive mode and a mainline drive mode, for one of better descriptions. One of them is more powerful than the other, so the shunting mode is all about getting heavy things moving and keeping them moving, but at a fairly slow pace. The mainline mode will go up to 80 kilometres an hour, and as it suggests, is for operating out in the main line. So these little machines don't just do shunting, they're also used for uh, local deliveries and local runs and moving between yards and that sort of thing. So having a look at the locomotive, let's jump inside. That worked well. Let's jump inside, there we go. So we've got two control desks. They are identical. So we've got one on this side and we've got one on this side. So they're pretty much the same. The two desks, very cool. Naturally, we have cup holders. Unfortunately, you can't pick up the cup. And the remote's not supported in the game. That would be a, an interesting feature in the future. And we've got a hard hat, which you can put on if you want to. Look at that. I earned a reward by pulling up the hard hat. There's no coffee in my cup holder. That's terrible. And you can put the hard hat back if you want to. So this loco is already actually running. Um, you, can, actually you can barely hear it. I'm going to turn that up better so we've got our battery power on engines running all these bits and pieces um, you can turn on pcb if you want to open this switch and turn it on you can also turn on cfa i am going to turn that on i'm not going to turn on pcb for the purposes of this review because i don't want it to get in the way of driving fun and at the moment i'm just ignoring what the uh, service tells me to do because we are playing the service so I'm just showing you the locomotive. Um, controls, forwards and backwards. This is also tied to the rail driver when it knows what desk you're at. So if I sit down, then it knows what desk I'm at. So I can go into forwards, or I can go into reverse. Now this only happens um, if this is in the neutral position. So power and brake off and same over here. So both desks are actually active all the time. If I get up and I go and sit over here and sit down and do the same thing again, forwards and reverse, back to neutral. Um, that's actually how you tell it which desk you're at. So you go and sit down and go into either forwards or reverse, that will change you to the desks. Now, when you're trying to change desks, the throttle or the power and brake must be in their off position. The train brake must be in the hold position, so the zero line there. And the loco brake must be in the hold position. If you don't do that and you try and change desks, it will not work. All right, we also have great big emergency stop button. Recovering from emergency stops pretty easily. You just whack the button again, basically, and wait for the brakes to go off. All right, so... Let's just do what this little tutorial says. It wants me to uncouple. Actually, it's not a tutorial. It's a service. I apologize. It wants to actually uncouple. 
So let's go outside and do that. Excuse the incredibly unco use of the steps there. My regular viewers will know I use a trackball, not a mouse, and it does cause some problems sometimes. I want to stand on the steps. I want to uncouple. Okay. It'll figure out that I uncoupled sooner or later. There we go. And it wants me to go all the way down there somewhere. Okay. Let's just check our points and see what we've got. So let's make sure we're set. Yep, the manual junctions appear to be set correctly. So let's get this thing moving while we have a bit of a chat. So let's get into forwards. And we want to release the brakes. So we're going to release from the which levers which. But now we've released the locomotive brake, and that'll just sit in the release position now. And we want to release the train brake. Those are coming down. You can see on the brake gauge there that the pressure is dropping, 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 dropping. dropping. All right, that's near enough for us to start powering now. So, on the rail drive, you pull it back towards yourself, and it'll go up to about 23%. Now, watch the rail driver carefully. If I want to go more, up a little, and then pull it down again. If I want to go less, up a little, and let it decrease. So we're now just coasting. So just covering that again, if you just pull it to the bottom, you get 23%. If you want more, just go up a little and pull it again. And it goes up to the next level. Similarly, when you're going the other way, but you can just take it into the center and let it go down to zero. It also has a braking capability that works more or less the same way in the other direction. There's Sefer. The Sefer is brutal on this thing. So it works the same way with the braking, just in the opposite direction. And then here, I'll just turn on my marker. I've passed it. Alright, let's do some braking. Because I passed my marker, I was too busy talking to you. My marker's all the way back there. Look at that. When I looked out before, I have to admit, a bit dumb. I confused that Sefer, I confused that scenario marker with uh, the ending marker because I had the ending marker turned off. But that's okay because it gives us a good opportunity to have a look around and it gives us a good opportunity to uh, do a bit of a demo. So into reverse and brakes to release and that already worked. And train brakes boys now. So let's start some train brakes back into hold and they will just sit where they are. And let's give it some juice. And we're going to look back this way. Now I could have gone and sat over in that desk and done that. It's exactly the same. Right, let's just throttle back to the middle so we're powering off. Yeah, keep accelerating. We want to actually stop where we're supposed to stop. Fortunately I didn't blow through any red signals so it's okay. On the next movement, I'm going to be quiet so you can just listen to the sounds because I reckon they're awesome. Sefer, very quick to react. And one thing I learnt the hard way is don't turn Sefer on when you're moving because straight away it gives you an emergency stop. Alright, so we're going to go 1.1 kilometres. Let's just check our points. Make sure that the game has set everything up for us because of course sometimes it does and sometimes it leaves it up to us looking pretty good so far because we're going to follow that blue path if you haven't played before so i'm just making sure that they're all okay and they all look really good so i do notice there's a red signal between us and where we're supposed to go that's interesting there's a lot of alternate paths too by the look of it that's also interesting all right then so I'm going to be quiet this time because I want to uh, want you to actually experience this. But let's change desks. So into the neutral position. We've got this in hold. Got this in hold. And this just needs to be a bit jiggle. So we want it to be in power and break off. Let's jump up and go and sit in the other chair. So over here, 
to go into forwards on the rail driver. You can also just press the button if you're not using the rail driver. Or if you're standing up, you can also do that. Because this thing will drive when you're standing up. Alright, let's release. The train brake is released, so we want to release the loco brake. Release. We can leave that in release or we can pop it in hold. It doesn't really matter. Now I'm going to be quiet for this until we stop again. Just so you can hear it. Because I reckon it's awesome. And hey, let's pop the windows open so you can hear it a bit better. Clown horn. Sorry. do what it says in a minute. Um, see through is the foot pedal down here so you may have noticed this little light here pops on which is a pic pictogram of a foot pressing the pedal and then down there there is actually the pedal so when you whack the Q key you're actually pressing the pedal. All right so we need to go back the other way so let's power and brake off, hold and hold so we can jump up and go to the other desk. It's up to you if you change the desks or not. I think it's probably more realistic. So let's go into forwards over here. Now that looks like a remarkably red signal to me. So let's just see what the map says. The map does say that's a remarkably red signal, so uh, let's just see if our path is set up properly. So we're going to go back that way, back the way we came down onto a different track. Assuming I'm going the right way. Could be going the other way. No, oh, there we are. It's going down there. So what we might do is let's does, yeah, there's no other indicators on there. Let's just ask our signal. Actually I shouldn't do it this way, should I? I should use the phone. Click on that. Well, maybe you can't click that. There we go. Denied, train in section 8, okay. And it might be that one. Yep, he's crossing our path. So about the locomotive, 
Um, it's very fresh. It's uh, very clean. It's remote, quite dirty, but the loco itself is very fresh. It's like it almost hasn't been used. Or the, the German drivers, maybe they're just really nice to their trains, I don't know. But um, it's very clean. There's a few little spits and specks here and there, but for the most part it's a very clean thing. You look outside, it's also very clean. There's not a lot of weathering. So, sign of pride. Um, the headlights are automatic, depending on what you're doing. They change directions by themselves, if you've got that turned on. I'm actually not sure what we've got them set to at the moment, because it was just on already. And to be honest, I'm not even that sure where you actually do the headlights. I would guess over here. Let's go for the that out. Headlights automatic, perfect. We'll just leave that the way it is. So the other controls we've got here while we're waiting for that signal, which is still red. Oh, we talked about those ones. Um, you can switch it so there's multiple of these things. I haven't seen that in game yet. And you can run long distance or shunting. So if you want to move really heavy things, shunting, but it's slower. Long distance when you're running out on the line. So let's, let's try this one in shunting. And you've got your cruise control, so you can set whatever speed you want to have. Some lights. Let's put some lights on. So they're lights that are inside. It's boring. Let's step off again. And the step lights are inside as well. Okay. And the only other ones are PZB, which you can turn on, and CIFA. Your PZ but B buttons are here, the usual ones. Override, release, and acknowledge. They also have rail driver equivalents. How are we going on this signal? Not yet. Okay. Well, I'd like to see, see it run in shunt mode, so... Uh, I wonder if we'll get a crack soon. Let's contact our signaler again. Proceed at restricted speed. Okay, it was worth doing the second time. I'm told Germans don't actually honk their horns, but you know. I'm not German. Brakes off, and away we go. So this time we're in shunt. Could be a bit slower.
up shortly. There we go. And it looks like there's some more that we need to connect to down there. Let's just have a quick run down there and have a look at what it's talking about. So we've got this whole set. And we're going to be going down here somewhere and coupling to some more. Alright, that's a fair way. Let's just make sure our path is good. So we're going to be doing a propelling move now. We have to keep an eye on that signal and see which direction it's facing when we're getting closer to it. That one will be facing to us. Alright, let's give that a crack. So, back in the logo. And let's start shoving. I'm also going to release the uh, train brake. Of course, we have to pump these cars up. And that's the at the moment. Promising, and off we go. started moving. I can put these back in the hold position. It does take a little getting used to. I just applied the brakes then accidentally. It takes a little bit of finessing to get these back into the hold positions. When you brake and power, it cuts your power off, so you have to go put it on again. Sifa, you can press it from outside. Uh, signals are on the right in Germany, so that one doesn't apply to me. There's a little one down here, Will. And that would appear that it stopped. Ah! Just in time. Good thing I know how to look. shortly because I'm getting pretty close to those destination cars. Remembering that that's at the other end of the train so you don't want to hit them too hard. about where I call it quits for this review anyway so I am really 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 happy with this little locomotive 
It's a third party development. It's not a dovetail one. It's made by Train Sim Germany or TSG. Uh, the developer's name is Make Colts. And it's absolutely fantastic. I really enjoy the physics of it. And I'm involved with diesel hydraulic locomotives. This thing is spot on. Absolutely spot on. Sound is really, really good. And it's a lot of fun to drive. So if you've got Rhine River Austin, which you need to be able to run it for the scenarios, I have to admit I'm not sure if you can buy it without Rhine River Austin and just use off the rails and scenario planner. I don't know how that works actually, so an interesting question. Alright, so I'll come off the dynamics. Well, I'll just apply a bit of train brake. And Kerplunk. Let's go in here and couple these little fellas up. There's manual couplings here. Okay, and it'll figure out what we're doing, so I'll pop back up to the loco. go forward 55 meters but anyway that's it for this review so yep definitely really like it good little loco fantastic to uh, play drivability is excellent it does take a little bit to get used to the controls because they're nothing like any other loco in the game it's really really cool to have something new to play with that's different and yeah great stuff good physics good sounds good graphics so let me take that back Great physics, great sound, great graphics. Really cool. Playability, excellent. And I would strongly suggest getting this one. Really enjoy it. Thanks for watching. I hope this review is helpful to you. Uh, if you're watching this and you want to see it some more, guess what? Sunday morning my time, Australian Eastern Daylight Time, 8.30am. It'll be on stream. We'll be doing um, a bit of RIO and we'll be doing another German route as well because I got a request to drive the 155, I think, which will be a bit of a challenge because I haven't actually touched it, and I probably won't before the stream because I won't have time. Anyway, that's all good. Have fun, viewers. As always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, chuck us a subscribe and click the little tinkly bell if you want notifications, and uh, appreciate you being around. If you've got any questions, just chuck them in the comments or we'll pop into the stream and ask in the chat. Alrighty. Thanks, guys. See you later. Welcome any and all feedback. Feel free to comment on the video. Constructive criticism is welcome, especially if I've got something wrong. I stream every Sunday morning starting at 8.30am, and I also do ad hoc streams from time to time during the week. Please subscribe and click notify to avoid missing out. Subscribing helps me by helping me see what content is good and how it helps the channel grow or doesn't, as the case may be.